Do you think loneliness and depression are just villains in your life story? Think again. Picture discovering an ancient secret that turns these emotions into powerful tools for self-awareness and resilience. Yes, I'm talking about Stoicism, a philosophy that has challenged and transformed lives for centuries. But here's the twist. What if these dark moments were actually invitations to a journey of self-discovery and unwavering strength? Get ready because I'm about to unveil not just one, but eight stoic remedies that offer not only immediate relief, but also a personal revolution. If you're prepared to find the light at the end of the tunnel and equip yourself with ancient wisdom to combat loneliness and depression, stick around. Your perspective is about to undergo a profound shift. But before we dive in, if you haven't already, Take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. It's just a simple click for you, but it means the world to us. This helps support the channel and ensures you stay updated with all our latest insights and strategies for living a stoic life. Ready to begin? Step 1. Embracing Impermanence Imagine walking along a road surrounded by the fleeting glow of dawn. The words of Emperor Marcus Aurelius echo in your mind. Everything you hear is going to die. Everything you see is going to die. And remember, you are going to die too. It may seem grim at first, but within these words lies a hidden hope. Consider this. If everything is temporary, wouldn't loneliness and depression also be passing guests on our journey? In this contemplation, we find a potent antidote to the weight of permanence. Acceptance. Embracing this universal truth is akin to opening the windows of the soul to welcome the fresh breeze of freedom. Yes, the freedom to understand that every moment of sadness, every period of isolation has its conclusion. But how can we apply this wisdom in our daily lives to ease the burden of these emotions? Let's begin with a simple exercise in perspective. When you feel engulfed by loneliness or sadness, grant yourself a moment to observe nature. Witness how the seasons transition, how flowers bloom and fade, all within a constant cycle of renewal. This is the rhythm of existence, a reminder that nothing remains stagnant. Now reflect on your own journey. Recall a challenging moment you've conquered in the past. During that ordeal, it might have felt like the pain would never cease, right? Yet here you are, reading these words, a living testament to the possibility of overcoming. Each of these instances is proof of our capacity to rise from adversity, to transmute pain into resilience. And what if I told you that this resilience stems from within, that each of us harbors an endless reservoir of strength? It's true. The simple act of taking a deep breath, of moving forward one step at a time, is a declaration of defiance against the storm. Life with its peaks and valleys serves as our greatest mentor, teaching us to cherish the light amidst darkness. So, how can we embrace this truth and move forward? Here's a suggestion. Start a gratitude journal. Every day, Take a moment to jot down at least three things you're thankful for. It could be as simple as a friend's smile or the aroma of your morning coffee. This practice holds the power to shift your perspective, helping you find beauty in the small things, even on gloomy days. And remember, you're not alone on this journey. Each of us carries our own battles, fears and dreams. By sharing our stories, by extending a helping hand to those in need, we strengthen the ties that bind us as a community, as humanity. So I invite you to contemplate Marcus Aurelius' words, not as a reminder of mortality, but as a call to life. It's an invitation to live fully, with the awareness that every moment is precious and fleeting. Loneliness and depression daunting as they may be, are just fragments of a larger cycle, 
a cycle that presents numerous opportunities for growth, learning, and love. So what will be your next step? How will you utilize this insight to illuminate the path, not just for yourself, but also for those around you? Remember, change commences with a small action, a gesture of kindness, a word of encouragement. We're all interconnected in this tapestry of life, each possessing the ability to make a difference. Let these words serve as your guiding light, leading you through the shadows to a place of illumination and hope. Life is an extraordinary journey, replete with peaks and valleys, yet always worthwhile. Let's journey together with open hearts and clear minds toward a radiant future. Step 2. Embracing the present moment. Now let's delve deeper into a concept that can profoundly alter our life experience. Envision Marcus Aurelius with his timeless wisdom imparting to us a precious nugget of knowledge. Focus solely on the present moment, on nothing else. This simple statement holds within it a universe of liberation. But what does it truly signify in our day-to-day -day existence, particularly in times when we feel besieged by loneliness or engulfed by sadness? The past often serves as a maze of what-ifs, a fertile ground for regret and nostalgia. Conversely, the future is a blank canvas where we project our fears and uncertainties, incessantly pondering what next. Yet herein lies the crux. Neither the past, with its immutable memories, nor the future, with its uncertainties, are where life authentically unfolds. Life transpires in the now, in this very moment, as you absorb these words. Have you ever paused to marvel at the wonder of being alive? Have you noticed the extraordinary sensation of breathing, feeling, experiencing the world around you? Each moment is a gift, a singular opportunity to connect with the essence of our being, to acknowledge the splendor and vibrancy of life pulsating within and around us. To nurture this presence, this profound connection with the present moment, why don't we embark on a brief exercise together? Pause. Inhale deeply. Feel the air filling your lungs, the cadence of your heartbeat, the sensation of your feet grounding you. Observe your surroundings. What do you perceive? What sounds resonate? Is there something you can touch, smell, taste? This moment, however ordinary it may appear, encapsulates your existence. It's where everything becomes conceivable. Adopting the stance of full presence holds a profoundly liberating influence. By concentrating on the now, we relinquish the burdens of the past and release the anxieties of the future. This doesn't imply disregarding the lessons learned from our past experiences or ceasing to plan for the future. Rather, it entails acknowledging that the only moment where we can truly live, evolve, love and thrive is the present. But how do we sustain this focus on the now, especially when loneliness or sadness looms large? The key lies in nurturing gratitude and finding beauty in the little things. Be thankful for the sun's warmth, the rain's nourishment, the shared smiles with friends, or even the solitude for even in loneliness lies the potential for discovery and growth. And remember, every encounter, every circumstance presents an opportunity to be fully present, to offer our attention, care and empathy. In doing so, we enrich not only our own lives, but also positively impact the lives of others. 3. Differentiating between what's within our control and what's not. Epictetus a venerable figure in Stoicism, imparts a profound lesson. It is not what happens to us, but our reaction to what happens to us that impacts us. This perspective serves as a guiding light, particularly as we navigate the tumultuous seas of loneliness and depression. It reminds us that while we may not control the external events of life, we do wield control over our responses, thoughts and actions. But how do we effectively apply this wisdom 
transforming our journey into one of growth and empowerment. Firstly, it's crucial to discern the nature of the thoughts and emotions we encounter. When loneliness or depression overwhelms us, it's easy to be swept away by a tide of negativity. However, by recalling Epictetus's wisdom, we can begin to view these moments as opportunities to exercise resilience, consciously selecting how we engage with these emotions. Picture your thoughts as clouds drifting across a vast sky. Some are heavy and dark, while others are light and airy. You have the choice to fixate on the stormy clouds, or to recognize that beyond them, the sky remains clear and serene. This practice of detachment can help you realize the transient nature of your thoughts and emotions, empowering you to choose which clouds warrant your attention. Now, let's consider actions. The manner in which we respond to our challenges can profoundly shape our life's trajectory. For instance, when confronted with loneliness, you can opt to connect with others, reach out to old friends, explore new hobbies, or engage with communities that resonate with your interests. Each affirmative action represents a stride out of the shadows of loneliness and towards the illumination of connection and belonging. Regarding depression, while it often necessitates professional support, there are daily practices that can fortify your resilience. Activities such as physical exercise, mindfulness, balanced nutrition, and seeking moments of joy and gratitude can serve as potent allies on this journey. Furthermore, when confronting these challenges, remember that you're not alone. Many have trodden these paths before you, and many will follow. Sharing your experiences, whether through conversations with friends, support groups, or artistic expression, can not only lighten your load, but also illuminate the way for others. Epictetus urges us to concentrate on what lies within our grasp. Our greatest influence resides within ourselves, in our thoughts, choices and responses. By embracing an active approach to life, acknowledging that we possess the power to shape our experiences, we unlock the doors to a more fulfilling existence. So I urge you to ponder. How can you integrate this wisdom into your life? What small steps can you take today to alter your reaction to the challenges you encounter? Remember, every stride, regardless of its size, propels you in the right direction. And every deliberate decision signifies a triumph over circumstances, a testament to your resilience and capacity to evolve and flourish irrespective of life's trials. I hope this content thus far has sparked the inception of your personal transformation. Therefore comment, I will be stronger. Let's initiate a transformation here and now. Number four, cultivating resilience amidst adversity. Seneca, one of Stoicism's foremost thinkers, bestowed upon us a transformative insight. Difficulties strengthen the mind just as labor does the body. Envision this concept in action, particularly when confronted with emotional hurdles like loneliness and depression. Initially, these emotions may appear as daunting adversaries, casting shadows over our existence. But what if, instead, we regarded them as disguised mentors, each imparting invaluable lessons on resilience, self-awareness and the capacity for triumph? Loneliness, for instance, can serve as an invitation to explore the depths of our inner world, uncovering forgotten passions, uncharted interests, or fortifying our ability to derive joy independent of external companionship. It challenges us to be our own allies, to delve into the depths of self-awareness, unveiling strengths and vulnerabilities that may have eluded us previously. Likewise, depression, while necessitating professional care and attention, can also enlighten us about our boundaries, the significance of seeking aid, and the potency of self-acceptance and self-care. Within its shadows, we discover the radiance of our own compassion, learning to extend kindness to ourselves during moments of utmost adversity. 
So how do we apply these teachings to our journey? Firstly, it's imperative to acknowledge and embrace our emotions without judgment. Allow yourself to feel, recognizing that each emotion serves its purpose and has its season. Then, seek avenues to nourish your mind and body. Meditation, physical activity, literature, art, and any pursuit that sparks joy and fulfillment. Moreover, the influence of human connection cannot be overstated. Sharing our narratives, whether of struggle or triumph, constructs bridges of empathy and comprehension. Don't hesitate to seek support, whether from loved ones, peers or professionals. Remember, soliciting assistance is an act of bravery, not weakness. Furthermore, translate your experiences into action. Volunteer. Engage in causes close to your heart. Contribute to your community. By doing so, we not only broaden our horizons, but also reinforce our sense of purpose and belonging. Finally, nurture gratitude. Even amidst the darkest days, there's always something to be thankful for. This practice alters our perspective on life, guiding our focus towards what we have rather than what we lack. The journey through loneliness and depression isn't easy, but it's rife with opportunities for personal growth and transformation. View each challenge as a chance to fortify your mind and spirit, akin to how physical labor strengthens the body. With each step, each breath, you're crafting a more resilient, empathetic and fulfilled version of yourself. So I pose this question to you. What teachings do these veiled instructors hold for you? How can you utilize these lessons to illuminate your path and perchance the paths of others? Life serves as a school teeming with wisdom, where every obstacle has the potential to propel us up the ladder of personal evolution. Let's embrace this expedition with courage, receptivity, and optimism. Fifth, embracing self-sufficiency. Seneca, with his profound understanding of human nature, presents us with a groundbreaking concept. Happiness is not needing anything. This notion challenges many contemporary notions about happiness and where to find that elusive state of contentment. But how can we apply this stoic principle in our battle against loneliness and discover a haven within ourselves? First and foremost, it's essential to grasp that seeking happiness in external sources, be it material possessions, social standing or personal relationships, is a pursuit fraught with uncertainty. While these factors may provide transient pleasure, they are inherently unstable and fleeting. True happiness, as Seneca suggests, emanates from self-sufficiency, from the satisfaction that originates from within, independent of external circumstances. But how do we nurture this state of inner contentment? The journey commences with introspection and meditation, potent tools for unraveling our desires, drives and core values. By devoting time to self-discovery, we begin to discern between what genuinely contributes to our happiness and what merely stems from societal pressures. Moreover, Stoicism advocates for the practice of gratitude and appreciation for our current blessings. In a world perpetually yearning for more, pausing to express gratitude for the present enriches our lives profoundly. In doing so, we not only acknowledge the worth of our possessions, but also diminish our reliance on external factors for fulfillment. Embracing self-sufficiency also entails fostering a resilient mindset capable of confronting challenges and adversities without losing equilibrium. This is accomplished not by evading difficulties, but by confronting them head on, recognizing each obstacle as an opportunity for growth and character development. Viewing loneliness through this lens, we can perceive it not as a menace, but as an opportunity to cultivate self-sufficiency. Loneliness can beckon us to explore our interests, passions and potentials. Rather than seeking to fill the void with external companionship, we can learn to relish our own company 
discovering joy and contentment in life's simple pleasures. Ultimately, the message of Stoicism rings clear. Happiness resides within us. It's not contingent on acquiring more, achieving more, or becoming more, but rather on fostering a sense of contentment and gratitude for what we already possess. In this pursuit, we realize that self-sufficiency isn't a solitary journey, but a path of profound connection with our true essence. So I pose this question to you. What steps can you take today to cultivate greater contentment within yourself? How can you nurture a more resilient mind and a more appreciative heart? Remember, each stride in this voyage of self-awareness and self-sufficiency propels you toward a richer and more purposeful existence, where happiness is a deliberate choice, not a byproduct of circumstance. Sixth, embracing gratitude. Epictetus, with his enduring wisdom, introduces a mental exercise that, initially, may seem paradoxical. He suggests commencing each day by envisioning the challenges we may encounter. Hindrance, ingratitude, insolence, disloyalty, ill will and selfishness. But why would he advocate focusing on the negative? The crux of this practice lies in reshaping our perception and response to daily occurrences. By preparing ourselves to confront these adversities, any act of kindness or goodness we encounter becomes an unexpected blessing, with gratitude subsequently serving as a soothing salve for the soul. This practice isn't an endorsement of pessimism, but rather a means to fortify our emotional resilience. By anticipating hardships, we're not caught off guard by them. This approach enables us to maintain equanimity and poise in the face of unfavorable circumstances, diminishing the likelihood of being overwhelmed by our emotions. Consequently, when we encounter acts of benevolence or generosity, our appreciation for these moments amplifies as they exceed the expectations we had set for the day. Picture for a moment how this shift in perspective can profoundly shape our experience of loneliness. By mentally preparing ourselves for the prospect of navigating the day solo, sans expectations of recognition or companionship, any positive interaction or gesture of camaraderie becomes a beam of sunlight piercing through the clouds, a source of joy and gratitude. This practice instills in us an appreciation for and satisfaction in life's small kindnesses, thereby transforming our everyday encounters. Moreover, by fostering gratitude in this manner, we come to realize that we're not as isolated as we may have believed. Acts of kindness surround us, often in forms we hadn't previously noticed. This realization can inspire us to extend similar kindness to others, setting off a ripple effect of positivity that assuages not only our own loneliness, but also that of those in our vicinity. The practice of gratitude, championed by Epictetus, serves as a potent antidote to loneliness. It reminds us that even amidst life's most arduous moments, there's always something for which to be thankful. Whether it's a warm smile, a benevolent gesture from a stranger, or simply the beauty of a new day, there's always a gift awaiting discovery if we remain receptive. So, I encourage you to experiment with this practice. Upon awakening, mentally brace yourself for the challenges that may arise throughout the day, yet remain receptive to moments of beauty and kindness. Take note of these instances, ruminate on them, and observe how gratitude can reshape your perception of loneliness and enrich your life journey. Number 7. Embracing Nature Marcus Aurelius, with his profound insight, beckons us to contemplate the interconnectedness of all things, particularly our intrinsic bond with the natural world constantly reflect on how all things are connected with one another, he advises. This notion, more than a mere philosophical concept, offers a valuable avenue to discover tranquility and purpose, especially amidst feelings of solitude or isolation. Through connecting with nature, we're reminded that we're not solitary entities, but rather integral components of a larger tapestry, 
that encompasses the cosmos. Every tree, every river, every mountain, and every creature plays a role in this majestic symphony, just as we do. This realization can offer immense solace, particularly during moments when we feel disconnected or distanced from others. But how do we foster this bond with the natural realm in our daily lives? Begin by immersing yourself in outdoor experiences, whether it's hiking, gardening, or merely sitting in a park to observe the world around you. Allow yourself to be fully present, attuned to the hues, sounds, and scents. Witness the growth of plants, the movement and interactions of animals, and the eternal cycles of nature, indifferent to human worries. This mindful engagement with nature not only bestows upon us tranquility and serenity, but also imparts lessons on resilience, cycles, and regeneration. Nature confronts perpetual challenges and adversities, storms, droughts, harsh winters, yet consistently finds a way to adapt and flourish anew. This serves as a potent metaphor for our own existence, reminding us that despite the obstacles and solitude we encounter, we possess the capacity to endure and experience renewal. Furthermore, by partaking in endeavors that champion conservation and sustainability, we reinforce our rapport with the natural world and contribute to the welfare of the planet. This can amplify our sense of purpose and belonging, assuaging feelings of isolation by affirming that our actions hold significance and consequence. Moreover, as we contemplate the interconnectedness of all existence, we're urged to nurture compassion and empathy, not solely for fellow humans, but for all living beings and the Earth itself. This expansion of our sphere of empathy can profoundly transmute our experience of loneliness, supplanting it with a profound sense of unity and harmony with all facets of life. Hence, I urge you to heed Marcus Aurelius's counsel earnestly. Devote time to forge connections with nature, to observe and absorb its teachings. Allow this communion to remind you of your own resilience, fortitude, and the significance of your contributions to the world. Through this practice, you may discover that the sensation of isolation gradually wanes, replaced by a profound sense of belonging to the intricate fabric of existence. Eighth, embracing service to others. Musonius Rufus, a Stoic figure less renowned than Epictetus or Marcus Aurelius, but equally profound, imparts to us a fundamental tenet of both Stoicism and human existence. We are inherently interconnected within a larger community, and the welfare of that community directly contributes to our own. What benefits the hive benefits the bee isn't merely a metaphor about bees and hives, but a profound lesson on interdependence, cooperation, and the significance of serving others. This perspective encourages us to broaden our understanding of identity and purpose, suggesting that by engaging in actions that benefit others, we discover a potent remedy for loneliness. But how exactly does serving others reinforce our connections with those around us and alleviate feelings of isolation? Firstly, by directing our attention and efforts towards aiding others, we dismantle the barriers of self-centeredness that often isolate us. This act of stepping outside our own concerns to focus on the needs of others constructs a bridge between ourselves and the external world, showcasing our capacity to positively influence someone else's life. Moreover, serving others brings us into contact with individuals who may share our interests, values and aspirations. Whether through volunteering for local causes, participating in community organizations, or even offering small acts of kindness in daily life, each interaction holds the potential to sow meaningful connections. These connections, in turn, reinforce our sense of belonging and purpose. Serving others also has the power to shift our perspective on our own challenges. When confronted with the struggles and hardships of others, our own feelings of loneliness may appear less daunting. This doesn't diminish our own experiences, but offers them a new context, 
reminding us that we all encounter difficulties and that, together, we can find strength and solutions. Furthermore, engaging in altruistic deeds often engenders a profound sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. Research indicates that assisting others can heighten our levels of well-being, alleviate stress, and even enhance our physical health. This occurs because fundamentally we are social beings wired to cooperate and form bonds with our fellow humans. Hence, I encourage you to contemplate how you can serve others in your community. It can be as simple as lending a compassionate ear to a friend or as involved as initiating a community initiative. Remember, each act of service fortifies the hive and in doing so fortifies every bee within it including yourself. By dedicating ourselves to the common good, we not only alleviate our own loneliness, but also contribute to a more interconnected and compassionate world. If you've reached this point, it's because, like us, you believe in the potential for personal transformation and are prepared to embark on the journey towards a better version of yourself. But rest assured, this is just the beginning in our channel, each video serves as a new portal into the universe of self-awareness, resilience and stoic wisdom that awaits you. So why stop now? Envision the myriad possibilities that unfurl as you delve deeper into this path, the inspiring narratives and revolutionary strategies that lie within your grasp with just a single click. If this video served as the guiding light that led you through the shadows of loneliness and depression, consider what else we can explore together. So if you felt that spark of curiosity, that yearning for more, I extend an invitation. Subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Don't allow the journey to halt here. Like, comment with your own experiences and share this message with those you believe could benefit from it. Let's unite to form a community of inquisitive minds and steadfast hearts, all striving to discover their most authentic selves. Because, ultimately, the genuine adventure commences right now. Will you join us?